kefir and some discounted whipping cream uh, with a sell-by date of yesterday. So we've got a bunch of recipes coming up that we want to use cultured butter um, and we also need some cultured buttermilk. So I thought I would make the butter myself and making cultured butter is really easy. You just need two ingredients. You need, uh, you need whipping cream and, uh, and a source of the culture, uh, which we get from this kefir, which hasn't been pasteurized. So we start out with cream. You want 35% uh, cream and you want cream that hasn't been ultra high temperature pasteurized, which, uh, which in our area pretty much brings you down to buying organic cream. Uh, problem with organic cream is of course that it's really expensive. Um, and I usually wait until I see it at the grocery store and it's 30% off. And so this stuff, the best buy was yesterday, but uh, it doesn't really matter. And, you know, and a word on those other whipping creams, if, uh, if it's ultra high temperature, they also add a whole lot of crap back in, in order to bring the texture back to where it's supposed to be. Because um, the UHT process takes away part of that structure. This is, uh, this is unpasteurized kefir. It has all kinds of great bacteria in it. And so for a liter of cream, I want to add about 50 milliliters of this just as a starter culture. Uh, maybe that's a little bit more. Just has to be close. Doesn't have to be exact. Give it a stir, mix it all together. Then uh, you just put a piece of cheesecloth over the top. I'm using a beaker. You could do this in a mason jar. You could do this in a measuring cup. You could do it pretty much in any glass vessel that you have. I like these beakers for this because they're straight sided and it's really easy to get the creme fraiche out on the other side. So that's it. I mean, you can just sit this on your countertop for three or four days. The cheesecloth is sufficient. Um, if you're really worried, you can put a plate on top just to make sure that nothing gets inside. So sit this aside three or four days uh, out of direct sunlight and I will see you when this is ready. So here we are four or five days later and the cream has thickened up really nicely. And a lot of people are probably asking what's going on inside this flask? How can you leave cream on the counter for four or five days and it doesn't spoil? Well, let me tell you. So by inoculating the cream with enough lactobacillus and good bacteria, they very quickly lowered the pH of the cream to a point where other organisms, bad organisms, organisms that we don't want, can't live. So this became very acidic very quickly and the lactobacillus and the other really good organisms that we do want outcompeted everything else. So the only thing that could grow in there are good organisms. So that leaves us with, at this point, creme fraiche. Um, and creme fraiche is everything sour cream can do, creme fraiche can do better. Um, so you could take this and use it in all kinds of recipes that call for sour cream, but we're gonna churn it, we're gonna make butter. And you can see how thick it became. Thick and gooey. Oh. Wonderful. So into our stand mixer. Um, I'm gonna use what's left over there in my lunch. Onto the stand mixer. With the whisk attachment and see if I can get this on here. Now we're gonna turn this, it'll first turn into whipped cream, um, which would be amazing in a lot of different things. And then we're going to continue to whip it past that point and it's going to separate uh, into buttermilk, which will be very light see-through liquid, and butter, which will be thick and butter-like. So it's separated. Um, we have butter and buttermilk. Get a bowl and we'll put that there, and then we'll pour off the buttermilk. So this is cultured buttermilk. Cover this, stick it in the fridge, it'll keep for two or three weeks. Uh, you can make anything that you would use buttermilk for. 
And so this is butter, um, cultured butter. It still has a lot of buttermilk in it. So we need to squeeze as much of that buttermilk out as we possibly can. My grandmother had butter paddles and they were um, kind of like this, except fatter at the bottom here and they had grooves in it. And you would paddle the butter between the butter paddles and um, it would force all of the buttermilk out. And forcing all of the buttermilk out is critical um, if you want your butter to last. Uh, the buttermilk will make it spoil faster. So we just force it out, pour it off, force it out, pour it off, force it out, pour it off, and then start rinsing with cold water to make sure that you rinse all of it out. So over to the sink, pour it off, and then come back and just keep squeezing it out. And you just keep doing this until the water runs clear. And so there you have it. We, uh, we ended up with 325 grams of butter and 500 milliliters of buttermilk. And, uh, and we're gonna use that up in recipes over the coming weeks. You could add salt to this at the very end and mix it in. I never do for the cultured butter. I kind of like the flavor the way it is. Uh, it's gonna live in the fridge until I need it. Uh, so there's no risk of spoiling and the, the salt would help extend its life. I don't need to extend its life. And it also helps me to control the amount of salt that I use in other recipes. Thanks for stopping by. Hope to see you again soon. Hey Siri, how many ounces in 325 grams? 325 grams is 11.46 ounces.